Now to expand on the refugee rush, our panel weighs in former UK MP George Galloway and John Sidalides. He's a geopolitical strategist at Trilogy Advisors. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Uh, John, I'll go over to you first. A number of EU nations are sounding less and less welcoming of the Afghan refugees. This trend began in 2015 after millions of migrants fled Syria. We saw many of them die in the waters after their little boats capsized. If the EU doesn't take in more Afghans, could we soon see the same desperation again in the coming months? Well, clearly, hopefully not. No one wants to see that kind of flow of millions, uh, hundreds of thousands or over a million people, as we saw in 2015. But. The first responsibility of any government is to protect its borders and to uphold its sovereignty. And so it's very understandable that a number of EU countries, which suffered severe societal shocks in 2015 and afterwards, want to make sure they have control over their borders and then look to see, as the situation develops in Afghanistan, to what extent they might be able to accept a measure, a modicum, of Afghan refugees or migrants. But I think the first order of business is to deter migrants and refugees from thinking that they have safe haven in Europe anytime soon. So, as your correspondent noted, Greece has fortified its border with Turkey. Turkey is now completing a 500-plus kilometer wall with Iran that was originally meant to keep Kurds out and is now being designed to keep Afghans out. And you actually have NATO rivals Greece and Turkey in coordination, since their two government leaders spoke last Friday, to put together a policy to protect their routes from these migrants. The question will be, will countries such as Pakistan, which is really responsible for the resurgence of the Taliban in Afghanistan, or a number of Central Asian countries that are directly north of Afghanistan and have the space and the capacity, potentially, with help from Russia, China and the U.N., maybe they can absorb large numbers of refugees. But the European Union is determined to make sure that this flow is kept to a minimum as much as possible. Very good points. Uh, George, we just heard the EU Home Affairs Commissioner Yaleva Johansson say, this is a quote, it's important we help these people in Afghanistan when possible to return to their homes. She went on to say that she would support, help support the neighboring countries as we all should, she says. As we discussed yesterday, under the universal social rule of you break it, you buy it, don't the UK and NATO allies bear a greater responsibility to host the Afghans rather than dump them in neighboring countries who had nothing to do with displacing them in the first place? Well, it depends uh, what you mean by Afghans. If you mean people who have a specific and well-founded fear of individual persecution because of their political views, their political activities, their relationship mm -hmm to the foreign occupation of Afghanistan, then clearly uh, the United States and the UK, one or two others, but mainly those two, have a very clear moral responsibility, probably a legal one also, to take more than their fair share per capita of those uh, unfortunate people. But as I said to you before, Manila, you're not a refugee just because you're Afghan and your country now is run by an unpleasant government. That would mean, if you applied that across the board, hundreds of millions of people around the world would be classed as refugees. Anyone wanting to leave an unpleasantly governed country, but who is not a specific refugee, will have to become a migrant, someone who is applying to emigrate to another country. These two things have to be kept separate. The British are taking 20,000 of the former category, people that worked for us are uh, under threat because of their relationship to us. But the British people will not put up with a huge influx of people who are fleeing Afghanistan as, as simple Afghans who don't want to live under the Taliban. Now, speaking of what people will put up with, Angela Merkel is doing her, fa her farewell tour right now after 16 years leading Germany. She's out next month. The Germans are signaling a more populist sentiment these days. The Germans, the, the strongest economically of the EU states, without their support, will the bulk of Afghan resettlement, John, 
fall on America and Joe Biden? Well, as in most decisions regarding the European Union, Berlin has outsized influence over the uh, EU's institutions and over member countries. But I think given what's going to be the uncertainty coming out of the German elections next month, I mean, right now we have the possibility of three-way party coalition negotiations that may not be resolved for weeks, if not months, into early 2022. So I think the political uncertainty in Germany is going to make this an even more difficult proposition for the German people, who pretty much suffered more than almost any other society in Europe in the last six years because of Merkel's decision, her unilateral decision, without consulting her EU partners, to allow upwards of a million Syrians and several hundred thousand Afghans into the country over the last half decade. So I think it's going to be a very difficult push for Germany right now. They're focused on their uh, getting their troops out and getting their allies out, as George mentioned, but also on the future of the country for its domestic political objectives. So I don't think this is going to come back to uh, Washington because of anything happening in Germany. It's coming back to Washington because the White House really is the, um, the main driver of this situation right now in Afghanistan, which is unfortunate on a humanitarian basis and potentially catastrophic on a geopolitical basis. George, what do you say to Angela Merkel's farewell tour here? Well, uh, she's had a, a good innings, uh, not a bad turn, but she's probably gone on a bit too long. To be fair, a bit longer than she intended, uh, because there have been no heir apparent uh, who have uh, convincingly come forward. Uh, I think that uh, we could have had a worse German leader uh, than her, and it, she'll be quite a difficult act to follow. When I look at the current crop of uh, German political leaders, I don't see anyone, really, that I would describe, at first glance <laughs> yeah. at least, as chancellor material. So uh, the German people's election coming up is going to be a very, very important one. Yeah, I think, I think we might see a changing of the tide of, of the German population, I think, because of this new migrant crisis. And real quickly, George, let me stick with you, and then I'll, I'll give John the last word on this. Uh, Vladimir Putin has raised concerns of terrorists infiltrating the refugee population. George, we talked about this yesterday. Recep Erdogan of Turkey rejecting the EU and U.S. calls to host refugees for processing, citing they already have 5 million Syrian refugees. One of the Turkish government spokesmen rebuffed, saying, Turkey is not a refugee camp nor a transit point. Is this, George, going to put a wedge between Turkey and the West, maybe even driving Turkey closer to the Russian Federation? I think all kinds of events are ineluctably moving Turkey out of the NATO orbit and towards Russia, and this is one of them. Uh, Turkey is quite correct. Uh, they are hosting more refugees practically than anyone else in the world, and to ask them now to take more because of a war launched by Britain and the United States is perfectly absurd if you think about it. So uh, ever more hostility yeah. towards what Joe Biden has done is emerging. Every news bulletin makes European people and others less likely to want Afghan refugees coming to their country. They see men with guns, yeah. with turbans, with beards, they hear reports of brutality and all the rest, and they say, no thanks. John, I'll give you the quick final last word on that. It's an interesting question you raise, Manila. On the one hand, Erdogan, I think, has every determination to protect Turkey, as we mentioned earlier, from a possible massive flow of Afghan refugees and migrants, and is looking to the European Union to bolster the original deal between Turkey and Brussels regarding the Syrian crisis in 2015. But by the same token, uh, Vladimir Putin, as your correspondent noted, has no desire to see potential jihadists or drug traffickers coming into Central Asian countries in Russia his underbelly and may actually look to exploit this opportunity to drive a deeper wedge between Turkey, not only with the EU, but also with the U.S. and with the NATO allies, by seeing to it that as many Afghan refugees head towards Turkey rather than towards Central Asia. All right. John Sidalides, George Galloway, thank you, gentlemen, both.